<laughs> you know, I often tell people, you are a special and important person. And I also often tell people that everything you do matters deeply. And these are not empty words simply meant to encourage, but they are packed with an important message, I think. This is a video topic that I've wanted to do for quite some time now. It's actually one of the first topics that I thought would be good to do a video on. And this idea came to me early in 2020, just at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, when things first started to get out of hand. I remember watching the news stories of people going on fear-induced shopping sprees, buying out all of the toilet paper, as well as many other products, and the pictures of the empty shelves. And yes, the toilet paper is a little comical to some of us, but I found it quite unnerving, to be frank, that people would give in so readily to a sense of panic. In a situation where a cool head and a thought for your fellow people would lead to a better result, perhaps. Anyhow, I wanted to talk about the importance of compassion when I saw that, because I thought to myself, I wonder if any of these people looking back on their actions would recognize or think that they were not acting as their best selves at that time or thought that maybe they could do better. I wonder if they realized or thought about what kinds of motivations drove them to these kinds of choices. Now, that was a very tough year for me, as I'm sure it was for many of us. And over all this time, I've been able to reflect that in times of stress and struggle, I myself am sometimes not living up to the person that I want to be. And I think it's very easy for all of us, when things get tough, to lose sight of what's really important. And so, the main crux of what I'm getting at in this video has to do with the importance of the choices we make and the awareness we have of the motivating forces behind those. Part of this has to do with the guiding power of a value or principle, a virtue in the ancient Greek sense of the term where one strove to be the kind of person who exemplifies a certain virtue, whether that be a virtue from some religious or ethical system, from your culture, societal, or my favorite, that chosen individually by each one of us. And I do plan on doing an entire video just focused on that. In the semiotic sphere, this is the branch of semioethics, where we explore the meaning of our values and what it even means to be good. But let's put those specifics aside for now. And there's a couple main points that I want to hit on for this video about why our choices matter. 
Every choice you make adds up to become the person that you are. This is not just a bold assertion, but I think it's actually supported by science. Whenever you develop a new skill or practice something that you're not used to, you're altering the very structure of the neuronal connections in your brain. In neuroscience, it's called neuroplasticity. The myelin sheath that wraps around the connections between your neurons becomes thicker in the neural pathways related to the actions that you practice most. A brain signal not only flows much more rapidly and efficiently through a effectively coded pathway, but it's also more likely to take that route as opposed to a different one. For that reason, it can be difficult to unlearn deeply ingrained habits. And also for that reason, when you're learning a new skill, say, how to do a backflip or how to, uh, a new cooking technique or um, whatever you might think of, it's very important to practice it correctly because if you practice it the wrong way then you will get in the habit of doing it the wrong way or even in not the best way like if you're doing physical exercise it's important to learn how to do the repetitions the form of like weightlifting or calisthenics whatever you're doing it's important to learn how to do that properly or you might injure yourself and you don't want to get bad workout habits so there's a plentitude of examples right but I do think this applies directly to all of our actions as well and so what I'm talking about here requires a disciplined practice of mindfulness. Mindfulness of what's going on in your mind and your body, your emotions, whenever you're acting. Now, I won't suggest that you become fully conscious at all times of everything you're doing, that actually sounds almost a bit nightmarish. And I think the fact is that a lot of what we do throughout the day, we're not entirely aware of. I mean, how much of everything that you did over just today do you truly remember every detail of doing? Now, let alone over the last week or month. But in those moments when you do come to awareness, I wonder if you can notice what emotions are present and what inclinations do those emotions lead you to? When you're angry, are you more likely to snap at someone you care about? When you're afraid or concerned about your well-being, are you more likely to act in a selfish way that puts others at a disadvantage? What about when you're happy or content? Are you more likely to compliment someone or give them something that you don't need? And I do think that it is very possible when one becomes aware in these moments to stop before acting and choose to act in service of our guiding principles or values. In particular, I like to think, am I embodying the kind of person that I want to be, that I aspire to be? Whether you think of it in terms of values, principles, or just being mindful of how you're acting and how it affects other people, the more you learn to do that, the more you are able to build better habits of response. And I think this is especially important when we're faced with the more difficult emotions. When upsetting things happen that are out of our control, 
sometimes we're just hit with just the feeling that everything is going to hell or we're not going to make it. And in these depths of despair, it's the most important time to really be careful of what you're doing. To really act in a way that's going to lead you towards being the person you want to be. Because in those moments when you're not aware, you're most likely to act in accordance with the habits you've already built. And thus, the opportunity to change always exists. And it's not tomorrow or 10 days in the future. It's right here, right now, in this moment. The second key part of what I'm talking about today is every choice that we make doesn't just affect us, but it affects others. Now this, of course, anyone watching this video should already know. But here's another way to think about it. Every choice you make, every action you take, is more than just the action and its consequences. It is also the meaning behind that action. The meaning both to yourself and to all those who witness it. And to those who maybe don't even directly witness it, but witness the consequences downriver from that action. Indeed, what I'm saying is that every action we do is also a sign. For we live in a network of semiotic beings, we human. Everything you do will be interpreted by those around you. We often talk about setting a good example for children, the young impressionable minds, and I certainly agree that that's important. But are we also setting good examples for our peers? Just as it's important to surround yourself with those who inspire you, encourage you, and support you in your path, it's equally important to be that kind of person to those in your life. At least, if that's the kind of world you want to have. And so, there's a lot of responsibility behind each choice that we make. And none of us are always perfect. None of us are always going to be the person that we want to be. But I think we all have the potential to be. And we all have the choice. The biblical word, sin, is a word we often use to talk about doing something wrong. But the word sin isn't what was originally used in the Bible. That's what the English translation says. And sin comes from an old Latin word that actually is related to truth, as in something that truly happened, as in a wrong that cannot be undone, like a stain on your um, moral existence or who you are. That's one way to think about it. But sin, as it occurred in the Greek version of the Bible and the old Hebrew version, came from the Greek word hamartia. And there's also a similar sounding Hebrew word. But it literally means to miss the mark. It was actually a term used in archery and javelin throwing. And it literally meant to miss the target. And I think we often sin in that sense of the word. We miss the mark. If that mark is the ideals that we aspire for, that we aim for. And why not aim for that which is most valuable to you. There are some who would even suggest, many of the Christian biblical thinkers would suggest, that we find the very highest value and aim for that. Now, I'm not entirely sure how would one would go about doing that. And for the purposes of this video, I'll simply say that finding a meaningful value in your life aspiring to be the person you want to be is enough of a target. And you know, with enough practice, 
one can reliably hit that bullseye. They say, practice makes perfect, and even if we're not all perfect, we can certainly get quite close to that. And just as there are those that inspire you to be a better person, those who seem to often hit that mark, what if you could be that kind of person to someone else? So with these ideas in mind, the neuroplasticity and development of who you are in terms of your character and the person you make yourself through your actions, and the significance, the way that all of your actions are in fact signs. I want to, in this video, focus in on compassion. Compassion is one of my core values, and I'm going to talk about why I think it's so important. Our word compassion comes from Latin. Com is a prefix meaning with or together, and passion in the Latin sense has to do with a suffering, but not suffering so much as a awful thing that you have to deal with like being burned by fire, but suffering in the sense of enduring or undergoing something. You know, our passions are often thought of as those emotions that move us, that take us beyond our ability to choose. That which is a passion is that which you have no choice but to feel. And so compassion in the root sense of the word is that which we undergo together. That sense of recognizing and sympathizing with both another's suffering and with the difficulties of life that they must endure. And so when we act with compassion, we're acting in a way where we take account of what the other is going through, how it affects someone. And when we're compassionate to ourselves, we take into account that which we must go through. Perhaps this is more of what the Buddha had in mind when he said, life is suffering. Perhaps the Buddha meant that life is a series of events that we have no choice but to endure. For if it were not that, then there would perhaps be no life. So choosing to be compassionate means acting in a way that considers how the other is feeling, and what your actions will do to them. You want them to have a better life just as yourself. So when you act with compassion, you are training yourself. You are developing those neuronal connections to create a better world, not just for yourself, but for the other. And to truly be compassionate, one must understand what the other person wants. Otherwise, how can we really know that we're acting in their interests as well? And furthermore, when we witness each other being compassionate, we recognize that. Not only can you be the recipient of the beneficial effects of the compassionate acts of another, but you also see and interpret that as an example of how to be compassionate, or it just makes you think about it. And so I think that compassion truly lends itself to the flourishing of society because it creates a reciprocal catalyzation of the amplification of one another's fortunes. That's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> Perhaps I could just say that when we prioritize compassion, 
it has a direct and palpable effect on the world around us. And that's the kind of example that I want to set for those in my life, just as it's the way that I want them to treat me. I think back to not just the fear-induced buying frenzy that happened in that pandemic, but through all kinds of experiences in life, I think about when people forget compassion and the awful things that tend to happen as a result of that. And I think about how things might be different if people were more compassionate. But I don't have any control over the choices others make, and neither do you. But what we do have power in is our choices right here and right now. And all of those, oh, so sad, the, the murder, the robbery, the various displays of atrocious behavior that we see on the news, those do happen, but how much of a bearing does it have on your life and what you choose to do right here, right now? I can tell you this much, unless you were just interviewed in last night's news, it probably doesn't affect you directly very much at all. And besides that, these major news networks do tend to hyperfixate on the stories of strife and struggle. That gets them more views. I think there probably are a lot more acts of compassion in the world than one watching the news might get the idea there are. But even if you don't see it, or if you do see it, it's extremely seldom, you can at the very least create a compassionate world in the choices you make right here, right now, and in the lives of all those who you know and who you relate with. And that is why you are very important and very special and everything you do matters deeply because everything you do means something if not to someone else at least it does to you whether you acknowledge it or not thank you for watching if you'd like to continue this conversation or have something you want to add join the conversation in the comments below if you enjoyed this video, click the like button, and if you'd like to see more content, subscribe to the channel. Until next time.